Well, hey there and happy new year. Welcome to Unmistakably You. I'm Amy and I'm a wedding planner and educator here in London. If you are newly engaged, oh my gosh, congratulations. We know so many engagements happened over the holidays. We've already had lots of newly engaged couples reaching out to us and we can't wait to help as many of you as possible. If you're joining us for the first time, we do go live here on our Facebook page every Wednesday night. If you're joining us from our group Wedding Planning Simplified, we actually used to do our lives there, but we've decided for 2023, we want to be more accessible to more people. So we are now going live on this page right here every Wednesday at eight o'clock. And you're probably saying, but Amy, you're not live right now. And I'm not starting out the year by actually picking up my daughter from grandma's house. So I'm not live tonight, but ordinarily we are live and we do encourage you to post your questions or comments or thoughts and we will answer those in real time. Of course, if you're catching us and have a question, please don't hesitate to post it in the comments. I will absolutely get back to you or send me a private message or an email. My email is amy at unmistakablyyou.com. We do encourage you to to reach out and ask any questions. We are here to help. And uh, that is what we are doing here through January and February. So this year we decided we were going to start off with a series called Setting You Up for Success. So what we're going to do over the next number of weeks through January and February is tackle topics that you are going to experience as you start your wedding planning. So if you are newly engaged, again, over the holidays or maybe in the latter part of 2022, again, huge congratulations. It is such an exciting time in your life. I hope you've had some time to sit back and relax and let it all sink in and celebrate with your partner. And if you've had a few minutes to do that, you may have gotten to the point where you're like, holy crap, what do we do next? And this is the unfortunate thing that we hear from a lot of couples. The reality is that wedding planning isn't really like anything else you've done unless you happen to work as an event planner. It's kind of its own beast. And so we have a lot of couples who use words like overwhelmed and stressed. And we have a lot of couples who come in and they are kind of apologetic because they don't know what to do first. And I always say, well, why the hell should you know what to do first? I mean, how many times have you planned a wedding? That's why we're here. And so if you are seeking some professional help, first of all, you are a smart human. <laughs> so congratulations for uh, reaching out and getting yourself some help throughout the planning process. And again, that's why we're here. So today, our goal is to talk you through the first four things you absolutely need to do before you race out and put a deposit on a venue or buy a wedding dress. Because it's exciting. We know that probably the first thing you want to do is go out and book that venue that you've always been lusting after or go out and try on some beautiful gowns and get lulled into that sense of, of beauty and luxury and all of a sudden you find yourself buying a dress that maybe in a couple of months you regret. We don't want regrets. We want you to be as equipped with knowledge as possible uh, so that you don't regret anything down the road so that you can approach this planning process in an organized fashion that doesn't lead to wasting money, wasting time, or increased frustrations. So today, the first four things that you absolutely need to do before you book any vendors or buy anything. The first thing is that you and your partner need to set priorities. You absolutely have to be on the same page. You are a team and you are probably already starting to become aware that as soon as you get engaged, people have opinions and they are happy to share those opinions with you, let me tell you. So it's vitally important that you and your partner are on the same page and that you present a united front. So you'll want to sit down pour a glass of wine, pour a beer, sit in front of a fire, go out for coffee, do what you're going to do to have some time to actually focus and have a really streamlined conversation about the potential issues that you're going to face, first of all. Some of those issues might be things like budget. Unfortunately, unless you happen to be independently wealthy, in which case, good for you, um, <laughs> you're going to probably have some issues with budget. 
You may have problems with overbearing parents. You may have challenges with wedding party. There are all kinds of things that might rear their ugly heads and present themselves as problems. And you're going to need to figure out how to circumvent those issues or to deal with them when they arise. I am always a fan of being proactive rather than reactive. So if you can identify, you know, my mom really didn't have the wedding that she wanted and she's really been pushing for a number of years that it's important to her to have A, B and C. Knowing that and talking about that beforehand is going to stand you in really good stead when mom does start to say, hey, what if we do this? You'll already have talked about how you're going to handle that situation. You're going to want to make lists, and I actually recommend that you do this independently. So the two of you should make a list of what's important to you personally, and then sit down and compare those lists. So the things that you might talk about that might be priorities on your lists would be the size of the wedding the style of the wedding. Maybe one of you wants a sit down dinner and one of you wants a food truck. The formality of the event. One of you might want black tie, one of you might want a casual backyard barbecue. You'll want to talk about individual items of priority like photography or decor and floral or music or food and beverage. So these are things that you'll want to kind of rank in terms of how important they are to you and then compare with your partner and determine which of those items are similar in priority and which of them are quite disparate, in which case you're going to have to have some discussions about how you're going to come to a compromise on those things that maybe aren't of equal priority to either of you, to both of you. It's kind of like buying a house. I often liken my job to that of a real estate agent where you come up with a list of things that you want to have. And I, as a wedding planner, try to give you those things. But there are usually have to, there usually have to be some cons, some uh, compromises. You know, if you're buying a house and you want a big backyard and a finished basement and an ensuite bathroom, maybe you get the big backyard and the finished basement, but there's no ensuite and you have to decide is that something you can deal with? And it's the same thing with wedding planning. Stick to your priorities. Once you've come to a consensus, it's really important, like I said, that the two of you present a united front. So stick to those priorities, come up with a plan of how to deal with those other stakeholders who are going to try and sway you and, and impose their priorities on you and just present that united front. So that's the first thing you need to do is set your priorities. The second thing you need to do is set a budget. And I should actually just kind of pause for a second and say that these things aren't necessarily chronological, right? Like your budget is going to impact your priorities and vice versa. Your guest list is going to impact your budget. So all of these things are going to have to work synchronously with each other. So it's not like you can talk about guest list exclusive of budget, but just for the sake of trying to keep this as clear as possible, we're going to tackle the second topic, which is set your budget. You really need to determine what is realistic for you. I've had couples come across my couch who have just started spending and they figure they'll add it all up later. And it, it just as a half Scottish person who was raised to be frugal, that just makes me panic. I want you to be comfortable in terms of where you end up with your budget. I don't want it to be a guessing game that it all comes out at the end and you realize you got to remortgage something or sell a kidney. I do not want that to happen to you. So set that budget first. And that's not the easiest thing to do because you're basing your expectations of cost on your experiences to date, which probably don't include planning a wedding. So you're thinking about food and beverage, perhaps in comparison to what it looks like if you go out for a nice dinner. You're thinking about floral costs in terms of what you would pay for a Mother's Day bouquet or a bouquet at the supermarket. And those are not fair comparisons when it comes to wedding world. The unfortunate reality is that weddings are a very high touch service and therefore you will pay more for each individual vendor than you would if you were hiring a photographer for family photos, for instance, because there's so much more at stake. There is so much more face time with you and there's so much more emotional connection to it. So don't gauge your wedding budget based on your personal experiences to date. You might have to do a little bit of research and that can take a number of different kind of forms. You can get on those Facebook swap and sells and ask some questions. 
you can sit down with someone like myself or another professional in the industry and just ask some questions. It would be, it would suit you, it would serve you far better to spend 50 bucks on a consultation with somebody, take somebody out for coffee, take somebody out for drinks, get a real estimate of what's realistic in weddings in 2023 than it would be to just guess. Uh, you're going to need to think about who else is contributing to your budget. That might mean having some uncomfortable conversations. Maybe you're going to have to talk to your parents and say, hey, mom, dad, are you planning on, you know, spending some money on this wedding? And if so, how much? It's an uncomfortable conversation, but you need to know who's contributing what rather than anticipating that parents are going to give you 10 grand and find out that they only give you five you need to have those conversations. You need to think about when the date of your wedding is going to be and how much it's realistic that you and your partner can save up between now and then. You're also going to need to think about your other priorities in life. Are you also saving for a down payment on a house? Are you planning to start a family? Are you planning a move? Are you starting a new job or going back to school? These are all things that are probably going to impact the amount of money that you devote towards your wedding. Now, little shameless plug here, if you are newly engaged and you don't have a clue of where to start with creating a realistic budget, I would like to invite you to join our workshop, Beating the Budget Blues. It happens on February the 27th, that's a Monday, and you can sign up now on our website, unmistakablyyou.com, go to education and then go to workshops, and you can sign up right then and there, you can reserve your space online, spaces are limited, and it is an incredibly valuable workshop. We're going to walk through an actual budget and give you the realistic numbers that you can expect to spend based on what you're hoping. So sign up for that workshop. Now, the third thing you're going to want to do after you've set your priorities and discussed your budget or in conjunction with setting your priorities and determining your budget is to set your guest list. This one isn't always as easy as it seems because, again, there are those stakeholders who might have opinions. If mom and dad are paying for some of it, they might expect that they get to invite some guests as well. So I would suggest that you think about your guests in terms of categories of people. So think about the family that you probably have to invite, hopefully you want to invite, think about guests of the family, think about your social group, and then think about your work group. And you may have to determine where to draw some lines. You may need to say, sorry, we can't invite anyone from our work group. Or you may have to say, you only get a plus one if you've been together for six months or more. Or you may have to say, sorry, no children. So wherever those lines get drawn, just make sure that you're consistent with them and that you stick to it. Because if you let some people bring their kids and other people aren't allowed to, that's where you get into some issues. So we've talked about setting priorities, setting a budget, setting a guest list. Now let's talk about the last thing you're gonna to need to do, which is to create a planning schedule. I am a big fan of an actual schedule instead of just kind of, you know, pulling at, grasping at straws and, and doing things in a random order. You want to make sure that you have a sensible order to do things so that you don't end up booking your flowers before you've purchased your dress, for instance, which is going to be difficult because it doesn't give the florist much to go on in terms of style of bouquet and based on shape of dress and that sort of thing. So again, this is a hard thing to pull out of thin air. So what I would recommend that you do is find an existing sort of spreadsheet or calendar or some kind of schedule that exists, all kinds of them out there, the Knot, Wedding Wire, all of these places have planning schedules, or send me a private message with your email address and I'll email you my Supreme Wedding Planning Checklist. I'm happy to share that with you. Just shoot me your email. Um, write down absolutely everything that you're going to need to do and then schedule it in. So work with a calendar, either a physical calendar or a phone calendar or whatever. Work backwards from your wedding date so that you have everything in there and that you have a time that you need to stick to. Don't procrastinate. You will find that you do a lot of the planning up front. You're going to book most of your vendors in fairly quick succession. Then depending on how long before your wedding date, you'll probably have a bit of a lull in the middle and then things will ramp up again as you start sending out invitations and receiving R RSVPs and, you know, finalizing all of those last details. But overall, 
if you have that schedule and if you stick to it and don't procrastinate, it's going to reduce an awful lot of your stress. So once again, those four things are set your priorities, set your guest list, set your budget, and set your schedule, and don't procrastinate. If you want to hear more about these four things, I'm actually talking about these tomorrow night at Once Upon a Time Weddings in Strathroy. It's a beautiful gown shop that is hosting a sip and see tomorrow night. So you can uh, come and check out some gowns, have some bubbly, and we'll talk a little bit more about how to set yourself up for success. You can also reach out privately. Like I said, we're here to help. I'm happy to help with either full wedding planning, day of coordination, or we could even just book a two hour consult to kind of get you started on the right foot. I do custom consults with vendor recommendations and how to set up your budget and everything in between. So feel free to reach out if I can help in any way. And like I said before, we have that workshop series as well. So we're starting out with the budget workshop, but we do also have a lot of other really valuable workshops coming up. You can check out all of those on our website, unmistakablyyou.com. Go to uh, go to education and then go to workshops. We would love to see you there. Again, if you're newly engaged, congratulations. We're so excited for you. We are here to help and uh, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions or concerns or successes or victories. We love to hear all of your successes as well. Happy planning and I'll catch you next week when we're talking all about how to book your venue. So have a great week and I'll catch you next Wednesday. Take care.